HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have more from the Hopkinton Youth Commission Martin Luther King Day activities. HCAM News went over to CrossFit Resilience to check out the Lose It for the Library program. And we will get you up to date with Hiller's Sports. And we also have part two of our interview with Town Manager Norman Kamalu. But first, Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito was in town as Hopkinton became the 115th community to join the Community Compact Agreement. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito met with Hopkinton town officials to finalize a community compact agreement with the town. The agreement was put in place by the Baker Polito administration and more than half of the communities in the Commonwealth have applied to become a compact community. The document we're going to sign today is designed to, to help the town get resources to address two important elements. The first is um, a community-sponsored agriculture initiative. As you, everyone in town knows, we bought the Pratt Farm earlier this year, actually late last year, I think it back. And, um, and one of the uses we hope to have on it is, is agriculture to fulfill one of the goals of the community, which has always been to have a community-sponsored agriculture of the town. The agreement will also allow the town to apply for various state grants. That uh, the communities that are participating in the compact, which Hopkinton is now one of them, can now compete for and information and technology grants. Uh, so we will offer up to $400,000 in grants for an IT project in your community. So if you can think of a way to use technology to solve some of your local problems. We have some uh, ideas. Got some ideas. <laughs> about that if you, have market, you should apply. Uh, so the idea of this program is to incentivize you know, good decision making. And by being a compact community, you will now get bonus points for the larger statewide grants that are available from MassWorks, which is the infrastructure grant program, to parks, to complete streets. Uh, you have you know, put yourself on uh, the list at a little higher place uh, to be considered for some of those funds. So good for you, really strong leadership here. I sense a lot of energy and commitment and more importantly, forward thinking, you know, where Hopkinton uh, needs and wants to be. And we're very happy to be here today to support uh, your efforts and to help you achieve this success. So. I said this in the last one, January 26th is an anniversary date here in our Commonwealth because it was one year ago that Snowmageddon began. <laughs> we had over 26 inches, 30 inches in some places in our Commonwealth a year ago today and I'm really happy that uh, today is a nice, bright, clear day for all of us. <laughs> The trains are moving. They are good. They <laughs> are. Governor, thank, thank you, so you much. very yeah, much. And the so trains are moving today. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank thank you, so you much. very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very happy uh, to be here in the town of Hopkinton with our local leaders uh, to form a community compact. That means we're really emphasizing the relationship between state government and our municipalities. And today, Hopkinton has come forward to sign the compact and to focus on uh, both an agricultural initiative on Pratt Farm, as well as understanding the future economy here in Hopkinton and how they can really partner with private business to strengthen the jobs and the economy here. So two great best practices that Hopkinton has chosen and the state is as a partner funding and helping them achieve over the next two years. All right. 
Now that it's signed, what will be the next step? Well, the next step is for our st uh, state officials to work directly, and I think they've already started, uh, to work directly with the town officials here to make sure that we have provided the funding and the course of action and put the team in place so that these best practices are achieved. And they have up to two years to complete the best practice. So they'll have a commitment in terms of resources, funding, as well as the technical expertise of our administration to help the town of Hopkinton uh, put these practices into place. For more information about the Community Compact Agreement, check out our website, hcam.tv. Last week on HCAM News, Town Manager Norman Kumalu talked about four beloved longtime town employees who retired this year. This week, we have part two of the interview in which he discussed some of the happenings in town. Recently, some residents discussed disagreement with the Board of Selectmen decision to make Deputy Chief Stephen Slammon the interim fire chief until March 31st and then consider if a further search process should be done prior to the March 31st date. I asked the town manager what the thought process was behind the decision. I think um, having been a member of the uh, pre-selection committee and also having been at the meetings, uh, my understanding is that the selectmen were looking for a process that would allow them to interview multiple candidates. Believe it or not, town election season and the annual town meeting are only about four months away. I asked the town manager about the annual town meeting calendar. Our annual town meeting is our Super Bowl, and so I, I, I felt that the selectmen last night uh, articulated to the public the key decision points leading to town meeting. Um, the discussion points were around giving the Board of Selectmen sufficient time to review the issues that will be presented eventually to, to town meeting. Um, they also wanted to uh, make sure that there is the appropriate collaboration and coordination with the school team. Uh, and um, from our perspective, I think we will now be working diligently to try and identify opportunities uh, for bringing the information regarding matters that will be brought forth to town meeting to the public early in the process. In terms of the actual calendar, I think the, the key date um, uh, that I, I would like to share with the public is that the annual town meeting warrant will open February 2nd and it will close March 3rd. So the public will have at least a month uh, to think through the articles. Um, our message here is that we are available at town hall to work with any individual who wants to put together an article. We'll provide our time, we'll provide town council resources, and we encourage the public to contact the town manager's office if they have any questions regarding the preparation of town meeting articles. You may be wondering what will be the major topics of discussion in upcoming selectman meetings. Mr. Kamalu had a pretty straightforward answer. Yeah, I think it's going to be budget, budget, budget. <laughs> yeah, in addition to the budget, uh, town staff will be giving the selectmen, uh, I think, an update on the Main Street corridor project, uh, as well as some of the preliminary observations made by uh, the new IT director. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's time that we come back to the selectmen and give them an update from an... Um, an independent viewer as point of view. Yeah. It's going to be a busy period for us. Um, we're ready for the challenge. I think we have the appropriate team to uh, get us to town meeting and we're working hard to make sure that uh, this is going to be um, a smooth process for everybody. Don't forget, you can catch all Board of Selectmen meetings airing live right here on HCAM as well as the recordings of the meetings on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. The CrossFit Resilience Lose It for the Library program is in its second week. A male and female participant will be rewarded a cash prize for losing the most pounds during the one-month program, while the other half of the proceeds will serve to benefit the Hopkinton Public Library expansion project. Our own Mike Terosian is taking part in the program. HCAM News was on the scene to capture Mike's progress. 
stick with some uh, exercises that are a little more manageable, a little more um, controlled, and a little healthier for the shoulders in particular. All right, and um, in our case, that means more of a horizontal movement versus a vertical movement. Wall, pull those shoulders back and head back into the wall, right? Arms locked out and straight out in front of you, thumbs up towards the ceiling, and then try to pull back and reach towards this wall. Excellent, abs tight, arms locked out. Three, nicely done. Why am I doing this? That's hard. Nice. All right, we've got a pull up or whatever variation, right? So if you're doing ring rows, that's fine. If you're doing those jump pull ups, that's fine. Great. And then the last one is going to be shoulder taps. You ready for this? A wad. I thought wad is like the gum that you chew for baseball, but I guess it's workout of the day. And so we're going to try to do all these reps and. See if I can keep up with everyone. Uh, beast mode. Is that what you said? This is all about. <laughs> Do this all the time, every day. Every day, having Come fun though, doing it right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Having fun. You know how you use one of these just yeah. in case. I don't know how much longer. I get you back. But hopefully the yeah. battery's charged. <laughs> all right, so we went through today's workouts yeah. and so forth. What, what is it that we can do at home? We don't have this nice equipment. Yeah. We might just have enough space at the house. What can we do at home? I would definitely look for things. So something like a pull-up is obviously going to be a little bit harder to do at home. Um, but if we can do some type of weighted um, you know, movement overhead, so you're using kind of more of a push. So grab a water bottle that you have at home. Start pushing it overhead. Um, the push-ups you can definitely do. We have a lot of people that use an angle of, say, their couch. And they do the push-ups from their couch. Um, slowly start to work their way back down. I would definitely just try to incorporate those pull push movements. Um, if you get a pair of exercise bands, much like the ones that we use today for um, that sh uh, shoulder retraction shoulder that we did, yeah. they sell skinnier ones. You can do banded pull parts that will help with the pulling yeah. movement. So just using things you have around your house. Excellent. And burpees are always an option. <laughs> <laughs> Burpees you can do without any equipment. Exactly. Doing them is the truth. I practiced all week trying to do them, and I couldn't do them. They're I'm terrible hard. with them. I tried them, tried them. I'm sure, the longer I go, I'm sure the better I'm going to get. Absolutely. Uh, I want to talk to you about the diet. Yeah. All right. You know, I've been on it now since uh, I, I want to say I started on the fourth before fourth or fifth. I, I started the diet. Yep. And I find myself not being hungry, no need for snacking, yeah. which is great. Yeah. But um, what kind of things can you now do after now we're on it for two weeks? Yeah. How do you mix it up? How do you keep it interesting? So definitely try to mix up your vegetables. So what a lot of people don't realize is that there are vegetables that are in season or out of season. Um, the ones that are in season are obvious, obviously going to be a lot more fresh. They're going to sure. taste better. So I would definitely try to mix up your vegetable intake. Um, have you been having fruits as well? Uh, sometimes. Very yeah, little, sometimes. Yeah. So maybe start mixing in a little bit more fruits, a little less veggies. Um, mix and match that way. Try the different nut butters. Yep. So what have you been having nut butter? None yet. None yet. None so yet. maybe okay. mix that in um, and start having combinations of foods. So if you take a banana and you lather on some um, almond butter, oh, it's so good. Yeah, heat stuff almond up in the microwave. I've been missing the butter. It's like a dessert. Forget about my bagels I'm missing. <laughs> I'm missing my butter. There anything. you go. Yeah. All right, so now here's another situation yeah. for a person that is active on the go. I work 90 hours a week between my two jobs. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, there's a lot of, I found there's a lot of prep time needed to get my meals right. Yep. But when I don't, what are the healthy alternatives outside that I could, if I had to stop it, Bill's Pizza yeah. or something like that, yep. what could I get? I think it's really important to, because we have this issue a lot, right? People go out to dinner and they do really well at home and then they're like, I'm out with my kids, you know, I'm on the run, what do I get? It's really important to, you know, take accountability in and don't be afraid to ask if you're at a restaurant, like, hey, what's in the salad dressing? What what are you putting on my chicken or my steak? Don't be able, don't be afraid to ask for things plain. Um, if you're going to Bill's, get a salad with grilled chicken. Um, yeah. you or know, gluten-free pizza. Right. Uh, gluten-free, well, yeah. Gluten-free I mean, without the chicken. 
Right, you know, exactly. Stopping. So you have the exactly. gluten-free crust. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. So just take, you know, be more accountable when you go out to eat. A lot of people think it's kind of a free. And a lot of people don't understand too. They can ask for half orders. Absolutely. Uh, most of the yeah. restaurants too today, you can go out and say, listen, uh, you know, put half of it on my plate, put yep. half in the box. This way, you're not tempted. Have it for lunch tempted. tomorrow. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. All right, excellent. Absolutely. Great advice, and yeah. uh, we'll see what comes up Great next job week. Today. Yeah. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for coming in. Oh yeah, so <laughs> I think it's time to go have some cauliflower. So. Uh, <laughs> That's it for today. See ya. You can find a whole lot more about the Lose It for the Library program on our website, hcam.tv. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have more highlights from some of the many Martin Luther King Day happenings around town, as well as the latest Hiller Sports update. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. And by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. Welcome back to HCAM News. Many members of the community participated in the Martin Luther King Day On, Not Day Off program at the middle school. I had the opportunity to talk with some of the volunteers who utilized the day to help many great causes. You just take one of the stamps, you pick your color of paper, squeeze the stamp into the ink, and then just press it onto the paper to make the design. We're with Communitine, um, the, which is also doing scarves that can be sold at the mi middle school tomorrow and for the rest of the week. Um, we're um, making Valentines and um, packaging them up with books. And, um, and they're going to go to Project just because, um, so they can give it to people who don't um, have any books. Um, we're making central pieces for the seagulls. They're going to be used for like different holidays and they can put them on the foot of the, in the middle of the table. It's a version of Candy Land that teaches kids about um, healthy foods and what processes go in making their foods and getting food from faraway places. It's just like Candy Land besides the only difference is if you land on the winter moth or plane you lose a turn because the winter moth eats like the crops and the plane represents like all the fuel needed to bring food from long distances and if you land on the baby carrots since baby carrots are made from a lot of chemicals and bleaches to make them look like fresh and healthy in the size that they are if you land on one of their spaces you're stuck there till you get the same color at card as their pieces or the default is three turns yeah we need locally grown uh, or we made pickles that um, are made from cucumbers that grow in Hopkinton um, and they're grown with no added chemicals or preservatives in order to support uh, healthy eating habits and um, less processing. And, uh, this is our final project for our Gold Award and half of the troops split up into uh, Girltopia, which is about empowering women to make a better society. And then half the troop um, is doing a project to support local farmers, and it's all about eating locally and the dangers of eating things that come far away. And basically the main idea is if we empower women more, it's gonna close the wage gap and it's gonna make economic growth rise and rise and rise. And all it's going to do is better our society and not worsen it. But if we keep it the way it is, our society is going to get worse and worse and worse. We're making coloring books for the children's hospital. <laughs> all right, terrific. <laughs> How long did it take you to make them? Uh, like ten minutes. Yeah. Depends on what you put on the cover. Yeah. <laughs> Depends on how decorative you want to get. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so you just make the cover? Is there like a... Yeah. So right. we make the cover and then you fill it with like... 10 different pages of things that the kids can color. So you kind of do an assortment. And there's adult coloring books also that you can make. We're collecting items for the Serenity House um, in Huffington. And Charlie's helping me. 
making bags for people who have cancer. We're decorating them. And then after we decorate them, we fill them with all kinds of goodies. Some are for adult, uh, males, females, children, or you no, know, just a random one for whoever wants one. And they're really nice and they make people very happy. They make you smile. See, I'd smile. <laughs> all right, terrific. Thank you. We are midway through the Hillers winter sports season and we are getting into the playoff push. Here are the latest Hillers sports highlights. On January 20th, the 8-2 Hopkinton Hillers took on Ashland at home. The Hillers, who won six of their last seven coming into the game, continued their hot streak. Cross ice, it goes to, Karpen uh, to uh, McCluskey, to Karpensky. Avoids a check, shot and a goal. Karpensky roofs it and he gives the Hillers a 1-0 lead. Mason to sign a shot, saving a chip in goal. Goes in, and I believe Karpensky's going to get that one also. Hoki now makes his man, hits a shot and a save. Yeah, it was a goal. Wow. Unassisted goal by Voki. I, I didn't see that going. I beg your pardon. 8.01 to go in the game. The Hillers leading 3 0. Shot, Barrow makes a save, loose in front, up, oh, chip and tries, also a save, and now it's a goal. He now back checks the play, and off the sideboard it comes. And Lason tries to chip it to himself, and he does. He's got success, he throws it in front, oh, and a nice feed, and Simo scores. Oh, what a nice pass by Finlayson. He gave it to Simo, he was on the crease area, and he just jammed it in for the fifth goal of the night for the Hillers. Senior Will Karpensky finishes with a pair of goals as the Hillers grab their third shutout of the season, second over Ashland, five to nothing. The Hillers followed up with a three to one road win over Dover Sherbourne on January 23rd. Freshman Jack Sloan had a pair of goals in the victory as the Hillers improved to 10 and two overall on the season, which clinches a playoff spot. Hillers boys basketball in need of a win took on Norton on Wednesday, January 20th. Connor Sarapusco buries this three to put the Hillers up 16 to five. And then a little bit later, he hits another one to make it 26 to nine. Hillers led 26 to 11 after the first quarter. Second quarter, Nick Stanley gets in on the action as he buries a three to put the Hillers up by 21. The Hillers led 38 to 15 at the half. Norton had some threes of their own, but despite a late comeback attempt, the Hillers take the game 53 to 45. Nick Canal had a double-double with 11 points and 11 rebounds. Connor Sarapusco led the way offensively with 14 points. In the following game, the Hillers had a tough battle with Dover Sherborne, who is towards the top of the TVL standings with a 9-2 record. Connor Sarapusco picks up where he left off as he buries a three to put the Hillers up by four in the second. Hillers led 19 to 18 at the half. Hillers leading 33 to 32 in the fourth quarter. Sisitsky finds Canell at the low block. Just seconds left to go, a good rebound at the block. And the and one was drawn and completed by senior Tyler Mann to send the game into overtime. In the first four minute overtime, no one scored, so they would play a second overtime. With the game still tied at 37, this layup would be all Dover Sherborne needed as they take the game 42 to 39. The Hillers followed up strong, however, as they took down Millis 57 to 52 and a road game to improve to five and seven on the season. The eight and two Hillers girls battled Millis at home Julia Canestrari hits the three in the first quarter to put the Hillers up by four. Hillers led 12 to eight after the first. Third quarter, Hillers up by four. Ivy Goglin shoots over the defender to add two. Hillers led 29 to 25 heading into the fourth quarter. In the fourth, good ball distribution by the Hillers as Lily Morningstar bangs a three that put the Hillers up by 11. Millis fought back hard, but the Hillers took the game 48 to 45. Julia Canestrari dropped 14, while Ivy Goglin was a rebound machine as she grabbed a double-double. The Hillers improved to 9-2 on the season. 
A lot of sports programming can be seen airing soon on the HCAM channels. To tell you more, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, January 29th at 8 p.m., Dana Babin shares the inspiration behind her pink truck line on Hopkinton Coffee Break. On Saturday, January 30th at 4 p.m., it's swimming and diving versus Ashland. And at 6 p.m., it's ice hockey versus Acibet. On Monday, February 1st at 6.30 p.m., learn about all of the programs and services that the Senior Center has to offer on a new Senior View. At 7 p.m., Lisa Brager reads her poetry inspired by her dogs and life events on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. At 8.30 p.m., how our mental, emotional, and social states can affect our overall health is discussed on Physician Focus. On Tuesday, February 2nd at 6.30 p.m., it's girls basketball versus Medfield, live on HCAM Ed. At 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, February 3rd at 11.30 a.m., local artists come together to create music to celebrate Martin Luther King Day. At 7 p.m., plans for designing the new elementary school are discussed on a new ESBC update. At 8 p.m., middle school principal Alan Keller discusses how he came to Hopkinton, as well as initiatives being taken in the school on All About Hopkinton. On Thursday, February 4th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, February 5th at 6.30 p.m., it's Boys Basketball versus Bellingham, live on HCAM TV. And on HCAM Ed, the Mr. Hiller pageant will air. Check hcam.tv slash education for program dates and times. Do you want to know more about the shows we produce and when they will air? If so, just visit hcam.tv slash newsupdates where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. While there, you can also sign up for our daily news updates to keep up with all Hopkinton happenings. As always, thanks for watching. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thanks for tuning in.